Neisseria meningitidis, also known as meningococcus, is a human disease that can cause a variety of illnesses, such as meningococcal disease and disseminated meningococcemia. The bacteria is found in the back of the nose and throat and is transmitted by a close contact over a long period of time through saliva and respiratory secretions. Infants, teenagers and young adults are within the age range most commonly diagnosed. The usual symptoms include fatigue, fever, headaches and neck stiffness, joint pain, seizures, coma and death in 10% of cases even with appropriate treatment. If a purpuric rash forms, septicemia is often the cause and holds a mortality rate of about 50% and if the disease is not treated at all, it has a high fatality rate of up to 50% which mostly occurs within the first 24 hours. Furthermore, a complication of septicemia is gangrene and the loss of limbs in some instances. For meningococcal specifically, there are five main serogroups that cause disease being A, B, C, W and Y, which are distinguished by the polysaturide capsule. This polysaturide capsule is of particular importance as it inhibits phagocytosis. All infants in Australia are now vaccinated against all but serogroup B. Vaccinations against meningococcal use herd immunity, so only a high proportion of individuals need to be vaccinated. Antibiotics can be used as prophylaxis or preventative treatment, as well as a treatment after an Neisseria meningitidis bacterial infection is suspected. The virulence factors of Neisseria meningitidis make the bacteria more effective in infiltrating the body. The three main tools utilised include pili, endotoxin release and IgA proteases. The pili use antigenic variation where the bacteria alters its surface proteins to avoid detection which makes it difficult to target them as an antigen. The bacteria release a highly toxic gram-negative endotoxin called a lipooligosaturide that causes the mucosal membrane to inflame and the IgA proteases cleave the human IgA antibodies on the mucosal surface so that bacteria can survive without interventions from the immune cells. Once attached, the bacteria enters the bloodstream and travels to the brain and spinal cord, where in 60% of cases, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, causing the inflammation of the membrane. Once the bacteria is inside the cerebrospinal fluid, bacterial multiplication is often uncontrolled. The aftereffects of this disease include acquired brain injury, hearing loss, learning, behavioural and emotional changes, as well as sight loss, plus more. In the bloodstream where the bacteria have multiplied and damaged, vessel walls, deadly septic shock can follow and the bleeding can enter the skin and organs. Our patient is a 14-year-old female with typical symptoms of Neisseria meningitis, such as temperature, stiff neck and light rash. Increased body temperature could be because Neisseria meningitis requires a humid environment to grow in. A cerebral spinal fluid specimen was collected because Neisseria meningitis travels to the brain and replicates in the vet. Light turbidity was observed from the specimen. A white blood cell count of 280 times 10 to the 6 per litre with 90% polymorphs was observed. No red blood cells were examined. The gram stain could not be determined as there was no growth on cultures. Streptococcus viridens from the throat swab was identified. However, this was of no significance as Streptococcus viridens is normal throat flora. Hence, no further tests were conducted on both of these specimens. Blood cultures were taken from the patient and Neisseria meningitis was isolated from one of the two bottles. Hence, further tests must be completed. Neisseria meningitis requires 48 to 72 hours of incubation time to allow it to grow. However, as the patient's symptoms are associated with the deadly disease, we do not have enough incubation time to receive appropriate results. There may have been no growth in the second bottle because Neisseria meningitis is a fast tedious organism and the temperature requirements of 37 degrees and 5% carbon dioxide conditions may have not been provided. Another possible cause could be that concentrations of Neisseria meningitis are low in the patient's body or the patient is already on some type of antibiotic to prevent organism growth. Within one to two hours on day zero, 
gram stains are performed directly on the blood specimen. This is a quick and cost-effective primary test, which divides bacteria into either gram-positive or gram-negative. The stains differ between gram-positive and negative bacteria due to the thickness of the peptidoglycan cell walls. Horse blood chocolate and McConkie agar plates are inoculated using aseptic technique and incubated for at least 18 to 24 hours at 37 degrees under carbon dioxide enriched conditions. The New York agar is also set up to isolate and identify pathogenic Neisseria. It is incubated under the same conditions and time as the other plates. On day one, colony appearance is recorded from all agar plates that were incubated on day zero. This involves describing the shape, size, colour and texture of the colonies, as well as any hemolysis on the blood agar. Rapid tests are then performed using colonies from the agar plates. The catalase test is used to detect the enzyme catalase in bacteria. A small inoculum of bacteria is mixed into hydrogen peroxide solution, and the rapid production of bubbles indicates the organism is catalase positive. The second rapid test is an oxidase test. It is used to identify bacteria that produce cytochrome C oxidase, which is an enzyme of the bacterial electron transport chain. One drop of the reagent is placed on filter paper, and a small test colony is placed on top. Within 5 to 10 seconds, a purple colour will indicate the bacteria is oxidase positive. It is essential to perform positive and negative controls for both of the mentioned rapid tests, as it provided, provides a direct comparison to the test organism. Further identification can be obtained by performing a sugar fermentation test for glucose, maltose, lactose and sucrose, or an API NH which provides a direct identification of Neisseria, Myraxella, and Haemophilus species. A rapid latex agglutination test is also useful in identifying the specific antigen associated with the disease. The latex particles will agglutinate in the presence of a sufficient homologous antigen. Once the organism is identified, Antibiotic sensitivities must be set up by the UCAS method. This step is crucial as it determines which antibiotics are administered to the patient. The organism is lawn spread on MH and MHF agar and stamped with specific antibiotic discs. Following incubation for 16 to 20 hours in 35 degrees carbon dioxide, the zone diameters are measured to interpret sensitivity and resistance to the antibiotics. Quality control plates for the sensitivities must also be set up for reference. The expected results from the blood culture are as follows. The gram stain was gram negative diplococci. The catalase and oxidase tests were both positive. McConkie agar had no growth. This is because bile salts are incorporated into McConkie agar, which prevent the growth of the fastidious gram negative organism. The chocolate agar had round and irregular brown colonies, roughly 2 mm in size. Chocolate agar contains lyse red blood cells that enrich the medium, allowing the organism to grow. The horse blood agar had colonies which are round, glistening and convex with a clearly defined edge. Neisseria meningitis grows without hemolysis. There is growth, but not as well as chocolate agar because there are some inhibitory elements. Once heated, the inhibitory elements become inactive, thus Neisseria meningitis grows better. The New York City agar was used because it specifically grows Neisseria species. There was a growth. Colonies were small, roughly 1 to 2 millimeters in size and quite clear. Fermentation tests from the API NH revealed glucose and maltose are positive, sucrose and lactose are negative. The latex agglutination tests directly detected antigens for Neisseria meningitis, groups A, C, YW135 present in the patient's blood culture. Sensitivity tests revealed Neisseria meningitis is resistant to vancomycin, colistin, and niacin. Neisseria meningitis is sensitive to benzenal penicillin and rifampicin. This case is time sensitive as the patient can deteriorate, deteriorate in a matter of hours, hence treatment must be given by the doctor as soon as possible. Using our current understanding and methods, 
Diagnosing the Sioux mentioned it is, can take up to two days for the culture to grow and interpret them. Thus, a fast way to identify the organism is in development. Using CSF cultures, results can be difficult to interpret at times due to antibiotics administrated that may hinder the diagnosis. However, using a real-time PCR, it is possible to ignore the antibiotics within the CSF and diagnosing a patient with this CU mentioned it is quickly. This is done by using a variety of genes. CTI is an important as it is involved with the capsule transport and in the addition of a serogroup specific gene involved, a real-time PCR can identify the organism as either A, B, C, W, or X. This new method is accurate and sensitive in identifying the serial mentioned digits while skipping the days required to cultivate an egg plates. It also has the advantage of not mistaking it with other organisms as experiments have shown that the control groups using DNA from other bacteria came out negative. This method, however, is limited that although it can detect the presence of gene coding for a specific serial group, it cannot determine if the gene expressed within the organism. Thus, further research must be done to investigate methods to cover for this weakness. The serial mentioned it is it's a deadly organism that mainly affects the younger population. It has a mortality rate of 50% with almost half the people infected dying within 24 hours without treatment. Vaccines are available and are important in that, that it not only provides people with immunity, it also prevents the widespread of serial group B, as there is no vaccine for that group. It is therefore key that we understand how the pathogen works, its virulence factors, treatments and methods in which we can accurately diagnose our community. With the aid of new technologies and studies, faster and more effective methods can help prevent the unnecessary death that comes from the serial meningitis.